welcome to Variant, where we love comics more than I want Static Shock to appear in the Black Lightning CW TV show. I'm your host, Ares Quinones. The Black Panther movie is just under two weeks away before it hits its US release date. And after looking at the alternate versions of Black Panther last week, we're going to keep the Black Panther theme rolling with today's episode, The History of Ulysses Claw. For the new movie, Claw is being played by Gollum, I mean the great Andy Serkis. It's not the first time we're seeing him on the big screen, however, as he first appeared in Avengers Age of Ultron when Ultron chopped his arm clean off, setting the stage for him to emerge as a serious villain. But let's dive in and learn about this Panther villain's comic book history, shall we? Ulysses Claw, like most Marvel characters from the 60s, was created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. He first appeared in Fantastic Four issue 53 in August of 1966. And just three issues later, he would appear as his villain persona, Claw, in Fantastic Four issue 56. Yes, he is a Black Panther villain, but he's a villain who gets around because he's also an enemy to the Fantastic Four, Avengers, and Kazar from the Savage Land. If you don't know who Kazar is, I'm sure I'll touch on him in a future episode. Anyway, Claw, his origin. Let's talk about it. For his origin, I'm going to talk about two of them. His original origin by Stanley and Jack Kirby, and then his retconned origin by Reggie Hudlin. But first, let's start with the original. Ulysses Claw came from a military family. His father, Fritz Claw, was a colonel for Nazi Germany during World War II and was sent to Wakanda by Adolf Hitler to learn their secrets. But instead, he ended up crash landing in Wakanda. After realizing he'd stumbled on something valuable, Fritz started to murder the citizens of Wakanda so he could get his hands on the rare metal vibranium. However, he failed. As for his son Ulysses, he grew up to become a physicist mainly working on applied sonics, which led to him creating a sound converter. But there was one problem, he needed vibranium for it to work. So where do you think he went? Wakanda, of course, and he brought a bunch of mercenaries with him. And just like his father, he and his mercenaries started killing the nation's people when they refused to give him the precious metal. Now, if killing a ton of the nation's people wasn't bad enough, he also killed Wakanda's king, T'Chaka, who's also T'Challa's dad. Needless to say, T'Challa was a bit upset. He got his hands on one of Claw's weapons and used it against him and his men. The blast shattered Ulysses' hand and cost him his men, but he vowed to return and claim the vibranium. And Claw stayed true to his word. Years later, he came back to Wakanda and was able to hook his sound converter machine to vibranium, allowing the machine to create solid massive animals from sound which he used to fight the Fantastic Four and T'Challa, who was now Black Panther. Claw also has his iconic metal forest glove, as he called it, which can never lose its energy since it's activated by the slightest sound. But nevertheless, Black Panther managed to defeat Claw when an explosion was set off during their battle and a cave collapsed on him. Claw somehow survived, but he was trapped. So he decided to do one last experiment and climb into his machine saying, if I survive, I'll emerge with powers far different than those ever possessed by mortal man powers enough to enable me to destroy their accursed Black Panther, and after him, anyone else I so choose. Not surprisingly, the Claw did in fact survive, and when he re-emerged, his physical structure was now made of solidified sound. Yeah, I'd say that's the first. So that sums up his original origin, which I prefer because I'm more of a purist. But now let's talk a little bit about his retcon slash modern origin. Long story short, in this version, Claw's great-great-great-grandfather was killed by the Panther of that time. Years later, as fate would have it, Claw was hired as an assassin to kill Black Panther, something he was obviously more than happy to do, because the job would be good for his reputation as an assassin and allow him to get revenge for his great-great-great-grandfather. It's a bit of a two-for-one deal. Claw ultimately does end up killing the Black Panther, T'Chaka, but he doesn't leave unharmed. T'Chaka's son, a young T'Challa, manages to get a hold of Claw's gun and shoot his arm off, forcing Claw to flee. In the aftermath, Claw's sponsors were kind enough to keep him in hiding for a decade or so from Wakandan security, despite the fact that he didn't kill the entire bloodline. They also gave him a lower arm and hand made of weaponized metal. They did all of this because they knew once T'Challa took the throne, he would hunt down everyone responsible for his father's death. So Claw was essentially their weapon to eventually return to Wakanda and kill Black Panther once and for all. But just like that, you have his original and modern origins. But how about some story arcs? Claw has been in several stories over the years as a villain for Black Panther, the Avengers, and Fantastic Four. For instance, after his defeat in Wakanda in his original origin, Claw decided it was a good idea for him to attack the Fantastic Four in their Baxter building. But as you would assume, he was beaten and locked up. Eventually, however, Crimson Cowl would rescue Claw and he would join the Masters of Evil. And together, they actually managed to defeat the Avengers. With that said, the Avengers did later escape thanks to help from the Black Knight. Claw would then go back to doing what he does best, trying to take down Black Panther. Which leads us to Claw and the Savage Land when Claw agrees to help an alien open a portal to invade Earth. Because he's not a good guy. Claw starts by fighting Kazar in London, but the fight eventually leads to the Savage Land where the aliens begin their invasion. 
but Kazar is all like, not today, and defeats Claw, successfully stopping the invasion. Now this formula of Claw attacking so-and-so, only to be defeated, kind of goes on for a while, like when he made sound constructs of the Fantastic Four and of Scarlet Witch, in order to defeat the Vision, only to see him fail in the end. The same type of thing also happened in the Secret War storyline. After being brought to Battle World, Doctor Doom frees Claw and asks for the Master of Sound's help. After being used by Doctor Doom and fighting almost every Marvel hero and then disappearing in an energy blast, Claw is thought to be dead. Of course he's not, because, say it with me, comic books. Now skipping some stuff here and there like the West Coast Avengers, the Masters of Evil, and Thunderbolts, we are brought all the way to the Superior Carnage story. Essentially what happens is Claw is hired by his old buddy the Wizard to join the new Frightful Four team. The team consisted of Wizard, Claw, Dr. Carl Malice, and Carnage. Although Carnage didn't go willingly. They couldn't control Cletus Cassidy, so Claw kept him in check with the use of sound, because symbiote's weakness is sound. Long story short, Claw and Wizard had to give Dr. Malice a blood transfusion with Cassidy's blood to turn Malice into Carnage, as they couldn't control Cassidy's brain. But they could control Malice's, so they did the transfusion turning Malice into Superior Carnage. Later during a battle when Claw had Superior Spider-Man on the ropes and was about to explode his head with a concentrated blast of sound, Carnage came from behind him and stabbed him with a vibranium blade right through his chest. And since Claw is made of pure sound, the piercing in his body made him become unstable and explode into a sonic boom. But is Claw dead? No, not completely anyway. He was revived in the next issue to become a ghost of sorts, as his energy had become part of the sound wall. And when he saw that Carnage was about to kill his friend the Wizard, he uses the last of his energy to form a lightning bolt to hit and defeat Carnage. But fear not, the Claw is still not dead. We later saw him as an inmate on Pleasant Hill in the Avengers standoff story. But I think you get the point. How about some powers and abilities? Since the Claw is made of pure sound, he's essentially immortal. Because of this, he doesn't have conventional human limitations, meaning he doesn't need to eat, sleep, drink water, he doesn't have to breathe, and so on. He also has super strength and can lift up to 5 tons when fully energized. The man can produce sound with a maximum volume of 170 decibels, meaning he can deafen anyone within a half a mile radius. He can also convert sound into controlled blasts of concussive force comparable to a 3,000 pound blast of TNT. Similar to a Green Lantern in a way, he can create three-dimensional constructs like the animals I mentioned earlier. He does this by shaping and animating these constructs with his mind and they can only exist as long as he wants them to. As for his weakness, he's weakened by vibranium, as vibranium absorbs all forms of energy, including sound. So he's not too fond of Captain America's shield or Black Panther's suit. Read Fantastic Four's issue 53 and 56, the 2005 Black Panther series, the Superior Carnage miniseries, Secret Wars, the Kazar title, and the original Avengers series. That should be enough to get you guys started. First up for Wednesday, February 6th, we have Black Panther, The Sound, and The Fury, Issue 1. The fantastic technology of Wakanda comes to Dubai. But when the Claw launches a plot to extort billions from the citizens of the city, T'Challa's diplomatic mission becomes a search and rescue for the Black Panther. Here we have Venom, Issue 161. Cured of the disorder affecting the symbiote's mental state, Venom is back to acting like his old lethally protector self. Now we have X-Men Red Issue 1. Putting it simply, the first arc of the all-new X-Men team starts here, and Jean is back. Next we have Batman Issue 40. Are Wonder Woman and Batman falling for each other? I guess we're gonna find out in this issue. And finally we have Batman White Knight Issue 5. I've said it before, this is probably my favorite title out right now, and that's because it does such a great job exploring the mind of the Joker and the relationship between him, Batman, and Gotham. And that's going to bring another episode of Variant to a close, but I just wanted to let you guys know, obviously we didn't have a Variant live this week, but that's because the flu is going around, it's been affecting me, my family, so sorry about that, but we'll be back in full force this coming Monday. Other than that, make sure to go to VariantComics.com to keep up with the show and all things comic related. Also, if you would be so kind, hit the subscribe button and then that little bell next to it so you never miss a new video. But I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.